video, video. Got it? Guys, we found a skink. This is so small. This is so cute. We're not really sure what kind of skink it is, but it's awesome. And we found it burying underground. Isn't that adorable? This skink belongs to the Parvocincus family, a genus or group of skinks that are endemic to the Philippines. They can be found near streams and forest leaf litters hunting for insects and other small prey items. So cute! Where did we find it? Uh, so, yeah. yeah. So, now we're gonna put it back where we found it. Say goodbye to the skink. You can go. <laughs> nice. You can go. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Come on. I know we're friends. But you are safe to go back. Come One on. interesting fact Bye. about these rare lizards is that three species under its genus were named after Philippine mythical creatures such as the P. Mananangale, which is named after the Mananangal, P. Tikbalangi, named after the Tikbalang, and P. Duendorum, which is named after the Duende. Hey, it's Jazz, and this is Wildlife Matters, and I'm here at the tropical rainforest of Laguna. And with me is this cute Asian vine snake. I'm so glad we were able to see this while herping last night. So the Asian vine snake is a vine snake that you can find all throughout Southeast Asia. And the reason why it's called an Asian vine snake is because of the particular way that it camouflages. So what it does is it mimics vines. So as you can see, it has a really long and slender body just like vines. You can look at the tail. It's so easy to mistake this for just, check it out, a literal vine, right? Like, if you were a predator looking for a vine snake, you wouldn't even notice that he was there because he just so easily blends in with his environment. Another defining characteristic about vine snakes is they just have really amazing bright colors. Now, they can come in different color morphs. So this one's green. It's neon green and it has like blue, accents of blue and black. But sometimes they can come in yellow, sometimes they can come in a darker green. They're all just very bright and colorful. Another defining characteristic is the shape of its head. As you can see, it has a pencil shaped head. If you notice its tongue, it tends to stick its tongue out like that for a really long time. And the reason for that is it uses that to mimic the tip of leaves. So everything about this creature is all about effectively camouflaging and mimicking vines. So sometimes they'll just hang on branches and they'll even go with the wind like that. And so when they do that, it really looks as if they're actual vines, right? It also has the option to go aposomatic. So how it does that is it will puff by storing air in its lungs and when it does that, when it puffs out, so will the blue colors. The blue colors will stand out. And when those blue colors stand out, of course, it looks so bright and colorful, predators will then think that this guy is poisonous. So it has yellow eyes with a horizontal pupil, and that's because these snakes have binocular vision. So these snakes are very visual hunters, so that makes it easier for them to hunt for their prey, which are typically lizards, small frogs, um, yeah, anything they can come across that can fit their size. These snakes are mildly venomous, but I don't have to worry because that venom is really made just for the things that they prey on. And so if ever I get bitten by this, the worst thing that could happen is really an allergic reaction. And the allergic reaction depends on how my body reacts to it. It's possible nothing might happen to me at all.
turning the vine snake back where it belongs, we set out to find more creatures and stumbled on a snake that literally fell off of a tree. Yes, what is that? All right, this is a Philippine pit viper. I don't know if you remembered our previous episode when we released this back in Tuba Benguet, but that one was much smaller. This one is a big one. Now these guys are endemic to the Philippines, so you can only find them in this country. But check out how beautiful the snake is. I mean, you see that the whole body is green, but it has accents of blue, orange, and even yellow. This is probably one of the most beautiful snakes I've ever seen in my life. And um, yeah, it really shows you how beautiful Philippine creatures are. Called the pit viper, because when they hunt, they have heat sensing pit organs that help them to detect their prey. So whenever there's a frog or a, a mouse, a rodent nearby, they can sense the heat from that animal in order to find it and prey on it. So this one is very sensitive to heat. Wherever the heat is, that's where it wants to go. If you've seen our previous video in Tuba Benguet, we actually released the same species in Tuba Benguet, but that was a smaller one. This one is much bigger. And we can tell that this one is a female because it has yellow ventral lateral lines which is the yellow lines you see on the side over there. And it's a very big female at that. Compared to the pit viper we released in Tuba Benguet, this one is much, much bigger. This is an adult, so beautiful. So this pit viper is highly venomous. It has hemotoxic venom, which is venom that attacks your tissues. So if this were to bite my arm right now, my arm would go into necrosis. Meaning my arm would just be like dead, like the tissues would just rot. It's not a nice sight. So that is something that I am avoiding right now. So if you're not an experienced snake handler, do not try to do this uh, on your own. So we're going to release this girl later. But for now, we just want to take some nice shots, appreciate her beauty and present her to you guys. So you can see that we have such beautiful and amazing creatures here in the Philippines. But by the way, I just want to put this out there. Even if this animal is potentially dangerous to humans, there's no reason to harm these animals because the venom that this creature has is made for the items that it preys on. It's not for you, it's not for me, it's not for humans. So there's no reason to kill them. And if you're not bothering them, they're not gonna bother you. So if you ever see one in the wild, please don't just kill them for no reason. Leave them alone, let them be because they really, all they really want to do is run away from you. As you can see, it's not even trying to attack me right now because it doesn't feel threatened. It will only attack if it feels threatened. It's relaxed, it's calm, because it thinks of my hook as a branch and it thinks that it's just sitting on top of a, of a tree right now. So that's exactly what they want to do. These species are arboreal, so all they want to do all day is just hang out in the trees, do nothing, sleep, eat, repeat. Now off she goes, and hopefully this time, she won't fall off a tree again. <laughs> oh, a snake! There. Oh, oh! I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it! Wow, that's so that? cute. So this is a Northern Triangle Spotted Snake. Do you know why it's called the Triangle Spotted Snake? Why? Because under its body, you can find the triangles over there. You see that? It has triangles under its body. And I think the reason why it has triangles under its body is this is one of those aposematic creatures you were talking about wherein if a predator comes by or a threat, mm -hmm. they're going to show the triangles under its body to make the predators think that they are poisonous. Because you know how some animals in the wild, if they're brightly colored, if they're jazzy colored, if they look so jazzy, predators will think that, oh, this creature is poisonous, I should stay away from it and not attempt to eat it. 
So this creature is adorable. Can you see that? Look how small that face is. That's adorable. These guys like to feed on lizards, eggs, and guess what? Even other snakes. Smaller species of snakes like blind snakes and calamaria which like to burrow underground. This is not the biggest size they can get. They can still get a little bit bigger than this but typically they are not a huge species of snake. And I think this can only be found here in the Philippines, right? I think it's, I think it's endemic, is it? Okay. If it's the Northern Triangle Spotted Snake. This snake is non-venomous by the way, so... And you can see that he's not even trying to bite me or anything. He's just trying to get away. So adorable. When you look at the top, you're like, why is this called a Triangle Spotted Snake? Like, there are no triangles here. There's not much of a pattern on top, but actually, the beauty lies underneath where the triangles are. Nice. Nice. It's not easy to spot this guy because he blends in well with the with the ground as you can see. He's the same color as soil. He kind of looks like bark. He can blend in in so many places here in the forest. So can you see where the snake is? Where? He's right there. <laughs> so it's so perfectly camouflaged in its environment. You can't even tell which one's a snake? Is this a snake? Is this a snake? Oh, there it is. It's a snake. And I think that's also why the pattern looks like that. It literally looks like a twig. Because this little guy is a master of camouflage. So guys, this is our third day on this hiking, camping trip. So we're about to go home in a bit. But before that, I want to show you some of the creatures that we found last night while we were herping. <laughs> Can you get it? Ah! <laughs> Can you get it? So this, my friends, is a bent-toed gecko. There are actually many species of bent-toed geckos because it's a very wide group of lizards. So this is one of them. And look at the pattern on its body. Again, another creature that is so easily able to camouflage and hide itself when it's hanging out here in the forest. So these guys are arboreal, which means you'll find them mostly around trees. The unique thing about this gecko is, the reason why this is called a bent-toed gecko is because if you look at the toes, they are bent. So unlike other geckos, these guys do not have suction cups under their toes. But to make up for it, they have really sharp claws that will help them climb up trees and whatever surfaces they can. So I think that's why they have these bent toes because it's able to help them out again because they don't have those suction cups. So they need a little extra support. I can actually feel it gripping onto me right now. I'm trying my best to be very careful with this gecko because I don't want it to tail drop because geckos and a lot of lizards will actually do this thing where if they feel threatened, they will drop their tail. And that is called autotomy. So that is a way of defense, protecting itself against predators by dropping its tail um, so that it can run away and flee. So once they drop their tails, they are able to regenerate that. So we can actually see over here that it's done that before. Look at that. You see that the lines over there, those rings, here and here, I think. The colors don't match. Starting from here to here, the color is, the, there's a ring over there and the color has changed. And then again over here, there's a ring again and the color has changed again. So that means it's probably dropped its tail twice. So I don't want to give him a, a third tail drop. That's why I'm trying to be very careful. Look at that face. It's so cute though. So this gecko, just like other geckos, will feed on insects. And so they're actually also very important for our ecosystem because they help control our pest populations. Super cute. I'm <laughs> gonna set you free. So before the trip ends, remember how I told you about Asian vine snakes and how they have different color morphs here in the forest? Well, we were able to find 
another color and I just want to show that to you guys real quick. Hold on. So this is another Asian vine snake in another coloration. So as you can see, this one has a more mustard color. Isn't that awesome? It's so beautiful. I mean, look at that. You have two snakes with very bright colors. Same species. Same species, that's right. And unlike this green one over here, this is just mainly mustard, like it just has one color. I'm going to give you another interesting fact about this snake, which is that these guys are ovoviviparous. These snakes are ovoviviparous, which means that they lay their eggs inside their body, but those eggs are hatched inside their bodies, and so when they give birth to it, they come out into the world as live young. Okay, so are you ready to return these guys back into the wild? Oh yes. Let's go. Right? Let's go little guy. Thanks for your time, Mr. Mustard Snake. Are you ready to go? Come on. Go ahead, little guy. After setting the vine snakes free, they really disappear into the branches with the perfect disguise. Almost too hard to spot from the naked eye. Every time I'm allowed to encounter animals in the wild, I am in such awe of not just the beauty, but the sophistication in how each and every creature has been made and hardwired to fit a specific purpose an important role in our interconnected lives. It's amazing when you think of each individual as a fellow inhabitant, a roommate, if you rather, that shares the same home you live in and depend on to survive. Thinking about that makes you realize all the more about how much they need protecting. Protecting them protects the planet, protects us. Because remember that every piece of wildlife matters.